Good morning, lovely Zoe Tudor with more Pokemon Go goodness for you. And today we are doing our Twilight Cup uh, PvP tournament here in Newcastle. So I've had like zero time to prepare for this. I've got my team together. I've got a couple of things with like second moves unlocked, but I haven't like practiced. I haven't done any practice rounds, so I'm going in completely blind. Fingers crossed. I can remember my typings and all that good good stuff. But runs in there getting ready. We actually like squads all here. Like kind of borrowed of like a room at an RSL, so we're gonna see how this goes. Um, good free little space to use as well. I'm probably gonna get my ass kicked and we'll see how we go. Uh, for the first of the best of three, I did win. It was a very, very close match. So we're currently going into our second matchup here. The Sableye in the first round gave me quite a little surprise. I wasn't fully prepared for him. Going with the shield for this one, but keep your eyes out, guys. Be sure to shield from Sableye because that thing packs a punch, even if it's not doing super effective damage. So I'll show you an example here. I don't actually shield this Shadow Sneak, uh, and it takes a fair chunk off what is a pretty much a, t a very tanky Pokemon in Togetic. Shielding for the second one here so I can get my charge move off just in case, like just in case it doesn't work. Uh, Dazzling Gleam and Fairy, thankfully super effective against Sableye, but uh, he did block me there. Keep in mind as well, guys, uh, there's a new update. So if you see the shield, oh, ouch, there I go. If you do see the shield glow red, it, it does mean that that move would have been super effective. So jumping in now with Toxicroak with Mud Bomb, he doesn't shield and thankfully I'm able to wipe him out with that one and charge up really quickly for a second Mud Bomb, which is a uh, ground type move. The only thing that Skuntank is weak to is ground. Uh, as you see there, the shield uh, didn't light up for him red, but it should have because it is a super effective move. Flamethrower there, absolutely destroying me. So keep your eyes out for Skuntank's Flamethrower. That thing is powerful. For this one, again, this flamethrower absolutely decimates Venomoth. It is uh, super effective against Venomoth uh, and me being out of shields as well, though I had no <laughs> chance to protect against it. Even being well over half health, I had absolutely no chance to protect against that. So Kevin getting the win for the second round, going into the tiebreaker for best of three. I decided to lead with Skuntank again. Being that it was my first round in battle, I wasn't like completely in my flow yet. I hadn't found, you know, a, a good rhythm to the battles. I haven't had even any practice rounds at all. Um, you can see there, even with it not being very effective, Shadow Sneak just deals a fair little punch. Um, so the fact that I didn't get any practice rounds in as well, I was pretty much going into this absolutely blind and hoping for the best. But as we do go through, I did get a better kind of like feel for the game. Crunch there, thankfully taking out Sableye. Kevin comes in with a Skuntank as well for a mirror match. Uh, I did, you did see me there trying to swap out as well. I was going to swap out to Toxicroak, who has these super effective moves against uh, Skuntank. But for whatever reason, a few of us encountered this issue where we couldn't swap out correctly. We would hit swap, tap on the Pokemon that we wanted, uh, but it wouldn't actually swap out. So still kind of works out in my favor here. A sludge Bomb being super effective against Azumarill and taking a heck of a chunk of health out of that one as well here. Gonna use the shield just because I do want to stay in and hopefully either get off another quick uh, charge move or save myself for when he brings back in the, uh, what's the big, the skunt tank, when he brings skunt tank back in. And then <laughs> as unfortunately I couldn't last out long enough against the Azumarill, bringing in skunt tank and you can see here for whatever reason I can't like for whatever reason, I did have a charge move ready to go. I was trying to mash that one as I came into battle, but I couldn't uh, use it. I had the, the swap out menu in the way. So again, another another situation where maybe we could have reset the match, but I wasn't too you know passionate about it either way. That was you know okay with that. But guys, do keep your eye out for errors like that, because you, if you do think that it is something that could have absolutely changed the flow of the game, but um, you can call those out to your local, you know, your ref uh, for the game and have the match reset. So going in now for game two against Joel. Uh, Joel leads with a Gengar. Again, I think this is probably the only Gengar that I actually saw, but everyone did have a bit of a varied team um, blocking there against his move. I did make the mistake here as well of not shielding uh, honestly, just absolutely neglecting the fact that Gengar can have poison type moves. 
I still, I think in this round was really not uh, completely in like in the right mindset and like, you know, fully thinking, what are my type of effectiveness? What are my weaknesses? Uh, and he absolutely got the better hand of me there. For this Alolan Ninetales as well, I am trying to get off that poison move, which will be super effective against Alolan Ninetales. Baiting out the shields here from Joel as well. So slowly taking down the Alola Nine Tails. You can see me there trying to attempt a mud bomb just in case, uh, just to get like you know, that last little hit off. And unfortunately, as the Toxic Croak does come in, I should have used Mud Bomb because it is super effective against Toxic Croak. Uh, but my hesitation there and grabbing a uh, poison move by mistake cost me that uh, matchup, unfortunately. But it's a good little learning curve to remember, maybe not to mash so hard. Uh, when those new, when you don't know what is actually coming out uh, you're, you're, that you're going to be versing. Thankfully, though, Venomoth cleans up and that match is mine. Next up, going in, I am kind of a bit more prepared here for Sableye, um, knowing that it will be absolutely destroyed by a fairy type move, and fingers crossed that he does not shield as well. I kind of now know that Azumarill is enough of a tank to take a hit from uh, Sableye without shielding, so I did make the gamble to not shield. And he made the mistake of also not shielding, but it worked out in my favor. Again, here, uh, Azumarill, once I can get this ice type move off, if he does not shield, ice is going to be super effective against Crobat. And from this point out as well, I pretty much uh, didn't swap from this uh, you know, selection of Pokemon. So this match I went in with Azumarill, Toxicroak, and Venomoth, and I did not change that loadout for the rest of the matches. So every single match after this, I went in with Azumarill as the lead, uh, Toxicroak, and then Venomoth, and that honestly uh, worked in my favor, as you'll see through the upcoming battles as well. So I managed to get rid of both of Joel's shields here. Uh, I still have got one spare just in case, um, and in this little matchup, I kind of tested uh, because Nine Tails will be resistant to both Fairy and Ice. Um, I think in this matchup or the next one, I did try to see which would do more damage, just neutral damage, the Play Rough or the Ice type move, and I did figure out that the uh, Play Rough actually, it's gonna be choosing there, Play Rough actually does uh, more damage as a kind of neutral damage type. If it's gonna be resisting both uh, Ice and the Play Rough, or if you just need to get some bigger damage out, go with play rough. And taking out the second win there as well, going on to the next round with a loss and a win. I did a little bit of uh, scoping around as well to see what other people were going in with. I did notice, honestly, a lot of Azumarils, a lot of Venomoths. Uh, there was certainly a lot of Toxic Croaks and Skuntanks as well. People kind of playing the meta. But there was also a lot of really interesting picks. Uh, one guy went in with Sharpedos, which I found really, really interesting. He and I had a friendly match after this comp, and the Sharpedo absolutely caught me off guard. It took me a second to say, well, what type is Sharpedo? It's dark and water, or is it... Uh... And that hesitation was enough time for him to get the advantage on me. A few other interesting picks as well through the group that you can see. Uh, a couple of Drapions and things like that, but nothing too uh, too far left of field. There was actually one Mr. Mime that caused a bit of trouble for players as well, and that was a pretty fun one to see. But it's time to go into the third round now as well. As you can see, going in again with Azumarill, Toxicroak, and Venomoth. No changes to my party whatsoever. So we have got a Azumarill mirror match. So we are both same type. Presumably with these same moves, but I mean, honestly, uh, I don't want to make any assumptions here. Either way, I'm going to be pretty much resisting most of what it's got. As you can see, that Ice Beam not doing too much. And I think this match is on where I kind of tested Ice Beam versus Play Rough. So you'll see here, charging up Ice Beam, doing a, eh, a fairly weak chunk of damage. Um, I did try to stack up or get as close to stacking up two charge moves in a row. I decided not to shield uh, Hydro Pump, doing a bit of damage, but... Um, and also trying to swap out there as well, which didn't work, which kind of eventually worked out in my favor, but another weird bug that we did see through the event. And then play rough here. You can see me charging up the play rough move and ah, blocked. Never mind. Give me one more second. Here we go. <laughs> one more play rough coming in here. Quick enough to charge it up, thankfully, before he could get another move off. And absolutely slamming him down. So definitely if you're involved in one of these matchups with Azumarill, uh, even though it's gonna be taking neutral from Fairy and from Ice, go for the Fairy move. It just does a bit more of a walloping. Remembered just in time as well that 
uh, Venomoth would absolutely destroy my Toxicroak, so I decided to go in with the Venomoth, go for another mirror match, but make sure, you know, I had more health anyway, I was going to survive a bit longer than his Venomoth, and then he goes in with the Toxicroak. All you need for this is four quick moves, four uses of the Confusion quick move, and Toxicroak is done. That is one, two, three, four, it's dead. Uh, Venomoth is an absolute powerhouse against Toxicroak. And then again, still, once again, leading with Azumarill for the second uh, matchup in this round. <clears throat> Tanky enough to go up against Venomoth, no issues there. And again, it is another instance of it being tanky enough to take the hits, especially with stuff that's not super effective. You don't have to use your shields. But, uh, Azumarill can can take the hits. Um, it is a I, I find like and this is just from you know one uh, one session. I'd like to do way more battles with this, but leading with Azumarill gives you time to think about what you might change into, what your opponent might have for this pairing, uh, and kind of prepare you a little bit. So thankfully, I had enough health to last through and get uh, a charge move off and bait out a shield, swapping in then with Toxicroak, who is going to be doing super effective damage once I can get that Mud Bomb off as well. Thankfully, I did shield against the Earthquake because that would have destroyed Toxicroak. Mud Bomb coming in now as well. No shield used, uh, out of shields, and working out in my favor. So Poison here, going to be super effective against Azumarill. So pretty decent, oh, look at that damage. Pretty, like, really decent overall co coverage from Toxicroak as well. It is unfortunate, or I mean, it's not unfortunate, it's kind of, you know, everything needs to have a weakness, but that it is so easily countered by Venomoth, but, you know, you have to then consider in the factors as well, is your Venomoth going to survive long-term in battle? <laughs> going in for the final round now, against the person who's basically cleaned up against every other person here. Uh, no losses at all, so fingers crossed, wish me luck. I have no strategy. We'll see how we go. So final round going up now, and this was against one of the guys who was completely undefeated. He won every single one of his rounds. Uh, is a clean sweep, I believe. I think maybe one of them went to the third round, but absolutely destroyed. So going up against Golbat as well, super weak to ice. And totally unexpected that he would not shield against that one. I was a bit unsure as to what moves Golbat might have, just because I hadn't come up against one yet. I came up against a Crobat, but I uh, wasn't fully aware for Golbat's moveset. Again, uh, Azumarill versus Azumarill. It's just going to be kind of baiting each other out and <laughs> running down the clock a little bit, trying to do enough damage to one another. Uh, possibly, you know, charge up a charge move if you want to and swap out to come back in later. But I was just trying to do as much damage as I could get off. Um, as I knew, Azumarill probably wasn't my one, wasn't going to last that long in the long run for this match. So just trading blows back and forth, shielding, not shielding, praying that I was going to outlast that Ice Beam, which I did, and it allowed me to get off one more sneaky charge move. So, so close there. It could have been a really risky gamble, but actually taking down his Azumarill. And then Tentacruel, uh, my brain is trying to process, uh, what is uh, Tentacruel weak to again? Um, and of course, I'm going to be wanting to go in with that Mud Bomb to take care of business. Uh, he does go in with the shield, which is a obviously a smart choice to do. Again, hoping that I can uh, kind of get the next charge move off quick enough. The smartest choice there for me to use that shield, even though it is my last one. But I'm pretty sure I can get, you know, that last charge off. Do as much damage as I can. He blocks again. I'm in the stress zone. I do have one additional Pokemon on him. But, you know, would Venomoth, you know, last that long against Tentacruel? I don't know. Thankfully, though, he's out of shields. Super effective with the Mud Bomb. Takes down Tentacruel. And that is a win for the first of my final matches. And then, again, as I said before, I did not change my team. It is a Zumeral, uh, Toxicroak, and Venomoth again. Um, I find that if I, like, you know, everything's kind of working, I might as well not swap it up and see how we go. So swapping out there to Toxicroak, who will have the super effective mood of Mud Bomb. But I did make sure that I had uh, charged up one charge move on my Azumarill before swapping out two. So that maybe I can get you know, a surprise when I come back in. So setting off Mud Bomb now. 
and not being shielded, which, sorry, and it being shielded there as well. So we set our charges off at the same time, so you didn't really see the animation of the shield, but he did shield that move. And you can see me here trying to swap out Pokemon, and it was not allowing me to do so, so I kind of just tried to keep tapping around that menu to make the, best, the best of that, but unfortunately I don't get to use my charge attack either. Going with Phenomoth, this thing just, you don't even have time to swap out Toxicroak just about, but he does, he sneaks it in really, really quick. Uh, and you can see me here as well trying to swap out. You saw me tap the uh, swap button and it did not work, so I decided to go for the Psychic because I was not to waste time. I needed to you know, maybe get some damage off and hopefully keep my Venomoth alive because I want to have that two Pokemon advantage on him when I can. Again, trying to swap out, trying to swap out, trying to swap out. I finally get it back in for the Azumarill and I just have to cop this hit when I come in because uh, he's already li lined up his charge move. Getting off Ice Beam, ideally, again, I would have wanted to go for the Fairy move, uh, but my thumb was just closest to that one. I was just mashing as much as I could. So able to use the Ice Charge move when he comes back in as well. With Toxicroak, it is blocked. I, uh, you did see my thumb there. Kind of get lazy. I, I forgot that he had one shield remaining. This one takes me out as well with the Poison move, but thankfully I, my Venomoth did survive to come back out in the end and take home the victory in this battle. You're all done. Record results. I got five. Is that what you pointed the one? I just did. I don't like the mix. You're all done. Yeah. Wow. Oh, hold on. Is it actually? We know, we know. There's a lot of people on three points, so it was very close, but what the tiebreaker score is the winner, and then the other three people all came second. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we're number two. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. So how do you feel about the whole tournament and the results? Like, because you two didn't verse each other, did you? We yeah. played each other. We did. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okie dokie guys, so back home now from the Twilight Cup. I did way better than I was expecting to do, to be honest with you guys. I really did not have enough time to prepare again this month. I like to compete again at the end of the month. I know that won't count towards my ranking in the Sylph Road necessarily, but I still want to have another go at it and learn a bit more for this league. Towards the end there, and you guys would have seen in the footage as well as I've said in the video, the Toxicroak, the Venomoth, and the Azuril. I used those three without changing for the last, what was it, six battles, and was undefeated. My opponents used a variety of different counters against that, but the Azuril's tanky enough to take most of the hits, the Toxicroak has really great coverage, the Venomoth, holy dooly, that thing just destroys Toxicroak. Four confusion, so one, two, three, four. Toxicroak is done. Onion rings. Plus, Venomoth is decent against a few other things in there. I genuinely didn't swap out from those three for the rest of the tournament. And I did pretty good. I came, I came second, so I came equal second with three other people, which is pretty cool. And beat the guy who is like the PvP guy in our area. He studies hard. He had that whole table of, you know, type effectivenesses, all the simulations and scenarios for what happens with, you know, using certain shields and things like that. So. That was pretty pretty interesting. I think a component in that as well was having my Togetic on my team really threw him off actually. He um, had this whole prepared thing of the main counters and when we paired up he was like, can I have a second just to check what Togetic is weak to? And I think in his mind thinking that I would use the Togetic, even though I didn't, I, I had intended to, I wanted to, but once those three, Azumarill, Toxicroak and Venomoth were just carrying for me, I didn't change the teams up at all. I think him thinking that I would use Togetic kind of made him prepare for it even though I didn't use it and that might have thrown him off in the first round and then as he changed his team in the second round again it kind of gave me maybe an advantage or it was just I don't know those three for me just worked really really well so if you're stuck for you know three things to have as your anchor go in with that practice with those three and see how you go because they definitely have a great like diversity of coverages resistances and most of them can take a bit of a hit. Venomoth is 50-50 uh, for taking the hits. But Azumarill can take an absolute pounding. So if you're stuck for three, probably roll with those and build a team around those three. I know that I'm not like the foremost spokesperson for PvP, for, you know, meta, that kind of stuff. Like I know that my main focus isn't on battling and stats and what's the most effective and who should you power up. But um, I suppose from personal experience and from what you guys have seen today, battling a variety of trainers 
with those three I did not change. I don't know if people were expecting me to change after each round, but if you keep winning with a certain team, keep going in with that team potentially. Uh, there's no need necessarily to change things up if it's going well. So let me know, how did you guys go in your Twilight Cup or is your Twilight Cup coming up? And if so, fingers crossed, sending all the best luck to you. What is your team gonna be? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've won or if you lost, either way, let me know what was your team in the comments and if your, your, you know, your comp is coming up, let me know as well. I wanna see what everyone's rolling with. It's really interesting. There's some really cool combinations today for teams. So I'm curious to see like what the, what the winning squad is. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.